Hi, my name is Carl Valeri, host of Aviation Careers Podcast, and today we're going to talk about if you're considering a career change but don't have the end goal in sight. This question comes from our contact page at aviationcareerspodcast.com slash contact. If you've got questions, please write us. Uh, so the first question we have, though, before we get into that topic comes from uh, a young person who says, I'm 39-year-old male, prospective career swapper living in California. So naturally, I purchased the access to your career guide. Uh, is there a way to filter my search for scholarships that aren't just for teens, students, women only, or geographically limited? Well, there is. Uh, there is actually in the content uh, of that actual scholarships guide, in the content you, page, you can actually see uh, a whole different breakdown from different parts of the scholarships guides. Uh, you can also see that we have a breakdown in, in geographic region. We're making it more towards uh, state level and that type of thing. So we're going to do more and more of that. But I do know your challenge. The one reason we don't have a big sort is because a lot of times when we do sorts, we miss out on a lot of those scholarships. And by the way, if you want to get one of those free scholarships guides, go to aviationcareerspodcast.com slash free or get a free scholarships guide from our sponsor, Strumer Law. This episode is sponsored by the law offices of Robert M. Strumer, LLC, and they're giving away 50 scholarships guides. They're giving away those scholarships guides by using the coupon code Strumer Law when you go to aviationcareerspodcast.com slash scholarships. The law offices of Robert M. Strumer, LLC, handles various aviation matters, safety investigations, and pilot medical certification. You can find them on the web at www.strumerlaw.com. And don't forget to use that coupon code STRUMERLAW. So thanks for that question. Now to our main question. This is number two coming from the content page. Uh, and it's a little bit longer, but let's talk a little bit about what this person is looking at as far as a, a career change. He, he writes into us, I'm considering a career change into aviation, and I'm not sure what my end goal looks like at this time. But I do know that I want to fly for work. Currently, I'm a private pilot with about 110 flight hours. First of all, congratulations on the 110 hours, and also uh, congratulations on starting to consider this as a career. My next step towards flying as a career is to get my instrument rating, but I'm having a difficult time getting through the ground school portion of the instrument rating. The ground school I purchased seems to not be designed for beginning learners, and I'm not finding it as easy to pick up as I did with the private pilot ground school. I am trying to go through the ground school portion first due to limited funds and want to get as much knowledge as I can before being able to begin actual instrument flight training. Do you have any advice as to how I can stay focused on learning the instrument rating or what can make it more fun? It seems to be a less interesting rating to study and I'm having a hard time with it. Well, this is a great question. Staying motivated is so important. You have to stay motivated during your flight training. First of all, a lot of really good stuff in there. It is a lot more difficult to get your instrument rating, but I do have some tools to keep you actually in the game because uh, if you're not flying, it's not quite as much fun. So number one, watch some YouTube videos. Watch things like this. Also videos uh, that actually have something to do with instrument flying might spur your interest in the actual flying. For instance, we have a video, and I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes, uh, that actually is about uh, how to descend via, and it goes through the whole descend via process, and that actually Actually, you don't even know what I'm talking about. Maybe uh, what I'm talking about is San Via, but that's the cool thing. You'll learn out what that we'll learn about what that means, and then you'll actually see us fly through that whole descent via into that airport, and that may spur your interest in doing some other flying. Also on YouTube, check out some of those videos about flying for the airlines and what they do. I know I'm coming out with another video about why it's cool to be an airline pilot, uh, but there's so many people out there on YouTube just talking about their journey. I don't really talk about my journey. I'm more focused on others, uh, but I think there's a, just a whole bunch of videos out there. As a matter of fact, I should do a top 10 of the videos that I like of people's journeys to their aviation career. And if you're somebody that's actually interested in helping uh, someone like this get motivated, please uh, think about coming on the show. It's really easy. Uh, click on how to be a guest. It's on the right side of the screen when you pull it up on aviationcareerspodcast.com. Another thing that you can do that actually helped me stay really uh, motivated during not just my instrument training, but all of my training is uh, get a, a simulator. Get a flight simulator, a Microsoft Flight Simulator. That's actually one of the reasons I got into aviation. I pulled up Microsoft Flight Simulator. I was working with it and I was like, wow, this is really cool. And it wasn't that expensive. And what's really cool is you can go out there and you can go fly 
and you can actually fly with other people online. So it kind of is a gamification of it. Uh, and you really are getting some good experience. Those people out there that are doing some of that flying online, the air traffic controllers are actually, some are actual air traffic controllers, and most of them are really uh, trained to be just like air traffic controllers. I'll give you a link in the show notes to the Flight Sim Association. I know you've heard me talk about it before, but it really uh, keeps your interest alive. Also, do me a favor, get out to the airport, go check out the airplanes, have some fun. I know it's going to be expensive to get up in the air and I know what you're doing. You're trying to do everything as, as quickly as possible or as inexpensively as possible, but make sure you stay motivated. So jump into a sim. You may even have a sim at the airport that's really inexpensive. Find out possibly at the school where you're located. They may not let you do that. But remember this, your instrument knowledge and your flying skills are most important for a career as a pilot. So maybe take a break and read some of the books that are out there. Uh, the Instrument Flying Guide, I know that's kind of dry, but there's some other books out there is Everything Explained for the Professional Pilot. What I like to do is kind of flip through that, and I'll have a link in the show notes to that. And, and as I'm flipping through that, I see something maybe I haven't seen in a while or is new to me or something like that. And what's really cool is it gives you the background of whatever that thing is. Uh, maybe it's 3585, whatever 3585 is. I have a video on that too. Uh, whatever it may be, it gives you the background as to why that rule came to place and, and some really interesting things about jet engines, etc. And that leads into another thing. On YouTube, there's some really cool stuff out there about different jet engines. Uh, and hey, you know, if you're interested in, in any type of videos on a specific topic, say you want to fly a 737, just watch all the videos you can about 737s. There's some pretty sophisticated simulators out there for 737s. I know there's one here on the field that's used for uh, for training, and there's some really cool sims out there. Uh, maybe even try to get a, a simulator demo at one of the airlines. You never know. You might be able to get into one of those. Those are so much fun. I actually teach in the simulators at the airline. It's a blast to have people come in and do those sim demos. But the most important thing is get out there and just use a, a you know Microsoft Flight Simulator or something like that. The other thing I think this is really, really important for everybody to do and is to visit your goals often, okay? And maybe redefine those goals. I know you, you don't have that end goal in sight, but, but do this. You know, in my office, as you can see, I have some pictures, and uh, if you're listening to this, you know, online, uh, you can't see this, but I have pictures of airplanes. Uh, I have model airplanes, actually, in some of my offices. I have books everywhere. These are things that keep me motivated. As a matter of fact, what I do is sometimes I'll put a picture on a wall as to what type of flying or what type of destination I want to fly to or what type of airplane I want to fly. Take a picture, uh, print it off online, and keep it on your desk. Keep it in front of you. Keep it actually, say, in your backpack or whatever you do to carry it around. Uh, keep it in your photos and make it a favorite photo and say, one day, I'm going to do that. And that's a great way to keep motivated, keeping the goals in front of you all the time. And when you do that, it seems that it's really easy to take that next step towards studying for your actual instrument rating. So once you do that, once you get motivated again, boom, get right back into that study, those studies. Uh, it's a lot easier to actually go towards a goal when you have that goal in sight. So keep in mind what the goal is. You don't have a, a strict defined goal, but you know it's flying an airplane. Get a picture of somebody flying an airplane. Go out there and watch some YouTube videos on people flying airplanes. There's so much fun stuff out there. Uh, listen to podcasts just like this. Listen to podcasts about flight training. So make sure you get out there and do that. But most importantly, if you're looking for uh, trying to fund uh, your flight training and to make it actually a little less expensive, uh, two things, scholarships, uh, number one. And then, of course, uh, get out there and fly in a simulator. You don't need the most expensive simulator. You need to know the procedures. It doesn't have to be this fancy simulator. Just go out there on the internet and see some of the videos I've put out there about flying approaches, see some of the other ones that are out there. And then you go out and you fly the approach also. That's a lot of fun. And oh, and one last thing, get to the airport. I know I talked about that, but I'm sitting here. I'm watching airplanes right now. I just saw a 767 takeoff. I'm watching a, another small uh, Piper Cherokee right now taking off. And it's really motivating for me when I'm sitting here to do these videos. And that's what helps me. And it helps me stay motivated to help you. And you can do the same. You can be in front of an airport. You can actually study with your books and watch airplanes take off and land. It really keeps me motivated. I know one thing. When I'm actually doing my videos in front of the flight line like I'm doing right now, uh, it, it really makes a big difference in me and, and my motivation to do this. So I'm, hopefully that's helped. Uh, again, that came from the contact page here at aviationcareerspodcast.com. Um, 
Also, uh, the next question uh, is similar to this as far as uh, paying for training. Question number three, real quickly, just a follow up, says, uh, I'd like to know if scholarships guide only contains stuff for the USA or if it includes other countries. I'm a Canadian, but have Brazilian and EU citizenship as well. I have not started flying yet, but I'm hoping to do this year. Thank you. Uh, and and also, by the way, if in the scholarships guide, we haven't branched out into too many other countries. We have a few in Canada, et cetera, but we are trying to put more and more of those in there. But no, primarily it's in the U.S., uh, but we are trying to expand beyond the borders. Uh, so, uh, so actually look for that uh, coming up. Also, if we want, if you want to discuss the specifics about a situation, maybe it's uh, something you've heard on here, uh, uh, or it's, you're somebody who's written in. Don't forget, we do the career coaching, aviationcareerspodcast.com/coaching. And if you want to help out uh, with getting one of those scholarships guides or giving a scholarships guide away to somebody, there's a real simple way to do it. Just hit the like button on the video. If you're listening to this online, please go out to our YouTube channel and hit the like button. That actually helps uh, get more scholarships guides out to people for free. So I'd really appreciate that. Also, don't forget if uh, you could use that coupon code. There's going to be a lot of them out there for free. AviationCareersPodcast.com slash free. Also, we have a sponsor of this episode, and that's actually Strumer Law. They're giving away 50 scholarships guides, and you can use a coupon code Strumer Law when you go to AviationCareersPodcast.com slash scholarships. The law offices of Robert M. Strumer LLC handles various aviation matters, safety investigations, and pilot medical certifications. You can find them on the web at www.strumerlaw.com. They're a real friend of the podcast, and we really appreciate them giving away those scholarships guides. So there's two ways to get those scholarships guides for free. But most importantly, if, if you don't know where you're going or, or if you're getting bogged down in the studying, I know it happens all the time. Take a short break, stop, write down your goals, get motivated again, go to the airport, but try to do something every day to move forward in your career and in your goals in your life. And the way to do that sometimes is not flying, it's not studying, it's actually redefining your goals and doing something fun in aviation, do something motivating, go to an air show, go check out some of the really cool shows that are out there that will be at. We're coming up on the Florida International Air Show at Sun and Fun, Triple Tree, all these different air shows where you can find people that are trying to help you move forward in your career. But make sure you write those goals down. Make sure you take a picture and keep those goals in front of you because I know that you can do it. I know you can do well with this rating, this instrument rating that you're trying to do, whether you're looking for money for scholarships, etc. I believe in you. But most importantly, do this for me. Take one step today to move forward in your career and in your life. Well, we'll talk to you next episode. Safe flying out there. Mm-hmm.